Welcome to 5.9's Math Moment. Today was another day of just division practice. So there was no new concepts that were introduced. Students just had time to um, work with long division problems using decimals and whole numbers and just get some extra practice with their teacher today. So we are still going to show you some of those problems just so you have more problems to refer to when you're working with your student at home. All right, so example one says Bethany has $5.94. The eraser she wants to buy costs 33 cents each. How many can she purchase? So again, when we think about the whole or what do I have, Bethany has $5.94. She wants to split that up and figure out how much can I um, separate into 33 cent chunks to buy these erasers that I want to buy. So we'll go ahead and want to set this up as a division problem. So this looks like $5.94 is on the inside because that's what I'm separating. And I'm separating it in 33 cent chunks, so I want to put that on the outside. Now remember, if I have a decimal number on the outside of my division bar, I have to move it to the end. So in this example, I need to move that decimal two places to get it to the end of the 33. Anything I do to the outside number, I must do to the inside number, so I also have to move this number two places as well. Now again, we encourage students to kind of rewrite the problem so that it's not as confusing to look at with those loops. So this just looks like 594 divided by 33. So now we can go ahead with our division. How many times can 33 go into 5 is what we would think first. 5 is way too small, so I know that it's going to be 0. So then I can start thinking about 59. 33 times what gets me close to 59? Well, I know it's definitely going to go in once, but your student might be asking themselves, can it get in there twice? So they could go ahead and pull that problem to the side and check. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. That's a little too much, so I know it's only going to be one time. Now I'm on to my subtraction step. 9 minus 3 is 6. 5 minus 3 is 2. And now I bring down my 4. So now I'm working with a pretty large number, 264 divided by 33. How many times can 33 go into 264? Well, I've got um, one problem here that I can look at, but I know I'm going to have to look for something much bigger than a 2. So maybe I would jump to a 6 just to try it out and see what I would get, and then I would know if I need to go lower or higher. This is one of those guess and check strategies. So I try 6 times 3 gives me 18. 6 times 3 gives me 18 again, plus 1 is 19. So what this tells me is I'm still about 60 away from getting my answer. So I want to go higher again. So students might jump to 33 times 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 3 plus 2 is 26. And that gets me exactly what I'm looking for, that 33 times 8. Eight. Got me exactly 264. When I subtract, I have zero, so there's no remainder. And the answer on the top tells me that Bethany would be able to buy 18 erasers. 18 erasers exactly, she wouldn't have any money left over. Now, your student might not have thought to jump right to 8. Maybe they tried 33 times 7 first. That's okay. If they tried 33 times 7, they would have found a number in between 198 and 264, and then they would have seen that they need to try again and keep going higher to get as close as they can without going over to that 264. So example 2 says 30 and 15 hundredths divided by 45. And remember that that division sign, or that backslash also means to divide. It's looking at, a, um, looking at it as a fraction bar, and a fraction bar means to divide. So the number in the front is going to go on the inside of the division house, and the second number is going to come to the front and be the first number for the division problem. So I have got 30 and 15 hundredths divided by 45. Now I'm just going to go ahead and um, divide normally, but first I have to take care of that decimal. Now because the decimal is on the inside, I don't have to move it one way or the other. There's no decimal on the outside, so I don't have to move it left or right. I just get to move it straight up to be a part of my final answer. So we encourage students to do that first so they don't forget to do it. 
All right, so the first fact I'm going to look at is 45 times, or how many times can 45 go into 3? Well, 3 is much smaller, so it will not be able to fit. I could go ahead and take this process through if I'd like, or students might just like to say, how many times can 45 go into 30? Either way, it's going to work. So 45 goes into, goes into 30. It cannot go into 30 because, again, 30 is too small, so I'm still left with 0 again. Now I've got sort of a bigger number. I've got how many times can 45 go into 301? With 45 being a, a two-digit number, that might be very difficult for your student to think about what are the multiples of 45 in their head. So one thing that they can do is a guess and check model. When students are working with the guess and check strategy, I always have them start with 5. The reason I have them do that is because multiplying by 5s is pretty simple. We can, um, we can multiply by 5s pretty easily. And also because 5 is right in the middle of 1 and 9. And so it gives me a really good indicator of whether I need to go higher or lower with that number. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply 45 times 5 to see how close I can get to 301. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 4 is 20. Plus 2 is 22. Now, this didn't give me exactly what I needed, but it did give me a very good indicator of that I'm pretty close to 301, but maybe I can get just a little bit closer. So I'm going to try 45 times 6. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 3 is 27, for an answer of 270. Now, I'm inching my way. I'm getting even closer, but your student might want to check out 45 times 7 just to make sure. So 7 times 5 is 35, 7 times 4 is 28, plus 3 would be 31, which would give me just a little too much, so my best answer is 6. 6 times 45 gives me 270, and now I'm ready to subtract. 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 minus 7 I cannot do, so I need to borrow from the 3 to make the 0 a 10, 10 minus 7 is 3. So now I have 31 left, but I have to bring down my 5 to continue my process. Now, the nice thing about having students keep their guess and check work is because now I can look over here and I found the answer that I need already without having to do any more math. So I found that 45 times 7 gets me exactly what I want with 315. So I'm able to put my 7 up top, my 315 down below, and... I am finished. Now, if your student did have a remainder here, when they're working with decimal numbers on the inside, they might have to add a zero and continue going to get that decimal number to e equal out. Um, and that's a strategy that they're working on um, in some of the upcoming lessons. If you have any questions about 5.9, make sure to see your math teacher.